we have for here with us Mr. Uh, Damhane. He's the CEO of Nordis United Football Club. Thank you very much for speaking with Nordis Life. Now, first, many, many congratulations on winning the Turan Cup. Uh, just tell us about that. How do you feel? Has the feeling sunk in? Are you still feeling the victory? I think uh, obviously we are very proud and happy that it's the first trophy for the club in 11 years. So obviously that makes us very proud. But I think uh, it's just one little small step. I think we need to be grounded, we need to be humble and we need to work more harder uh, so that we can continue with such performances and make our fans proud. That's right. Now uh, if we look uh, at the performances of uh, the players throughout the game, uh, we can really um, commend them. They put up some ex exceptional display of great uh, determination and you know that uh, never giving up spirit was so strongly inst instilled in them. Now uh, with this win, how has this victory shaped your beliefs and uh, the goals, the future goals that you have? No, I think uh, this has given us a lot of positives to take from. Uh, whether it's regard to the players, the coaches, the, the way uh, the mentality of the players is because uh, we are playing in the final at the Salt Lake Stadium against a big club like Mohan Bagan uh, where there are almost 55,000 spectators uh, all supporting Mohan Bagan and you are 2-0 down and then you come back and go on to win that final so I think uh, that shows a lot of character of the players, uh, a lot of the characters of the coaching staff also that we have so I think uh, these are the positives that we need to uh, take ahead into the ISL or the remaining part of the season uh, but apart from that I think uh, we just have to focus on our processes that we have set at the club. Uh, I think we genuinely need to work more harder because um, uh, winning is a habit and if you want to make winning as a habit I think a lot more hard work needs to be put by all of us that are there at the club. Right now, uh, how about let's talk about the Nortis uh, players, players from the hills, uh, from the Highland. Now, how about them? No, do you see, or you have many projects yeah. undertaken or being, yeah. you know, uh, being uh, taken up in several uh, states. Yeah. Now, um, how about the future of the Nortis, the football scenario in the Nortis? How do you see it in the next five years? No, I think uh, uh, football in the Northeast has always been good in terms of the talent that is available there. Um, as per our studies, we have seen almost 60 to 62 percent of players in uh, different ISL clubs or I-League clubs or I-League second division or I-League third division come from the region. Uh, so that means the talent is here. Now, uh, as a club, I think it's our responsibility that we are representing eight states here. We are not representing just one state or one city like most of the clubs do. So representing eight states is much additional responsibility that we have. And I think from, from this aspect where, where we are as a club representing eight states and the fact that there is so much of talent in the region, uh, I think we have to uh, work uh, with all the relevant stakeholders of all the eight states, whether it's the state government or whether it's the state football associations and try and see to it that we have a sort of a pathway from the grassroots to professional football, whether it's from under 7s, 9s, 11s, 13s, 15s, 17s and the reserve team and then the first team uh, to put a certain structure where a uh, where a deserving player can have a opportunity to grow uh, and make a professional career uh, for himself. So I think with regards to that, we are looking at having small, small centers across all the eight states, uh, which will we call as the day boarding, where you don't need to be housed, but you are living close to your family and then plus coming in the evening to train, um, you know, and, and get better. And then we obviously are looking at one mother sort of a center of excellence or the residential academy. And the Meghalaya government has been kind enough to give us 15 acres land where we intend to set up our uh, residential academy so the idea is to have these small satellite centers and then the players the best players in from that funnel into the uh, in, into the residential setup and when we are working uh, for the for at youth development or grassroots for the region uh, we cannot expect results in like maybe six months or one year you know youth development and grassroots is a long drawn process we have to be patient with it but if we don't uh, sow the seeds so to say right now now we are not going to have the fruits uh, in the future so I think it's a process that we all are invested in our owner John Abraham is very very keen to ensure that the talent is from the region is developed and taken to its right potential at the highest level that's right and now uh, how about because there are so many players from outside also there are international players we have marquee players and we have uh, players from here itself from our own home soil now what is uh, one of the challenges that you face or what are some of the challenges that you have or you face you know when you bring all of these uh, pool of talents from everywhere together and sync them into one group what, what are some of the challenges that you face during that process 
No, I think uh, more than challenges, I feel uh, what we look at when we are getting a player is to also see apart from his playing ability, which is obviously the most important part, is how good human beings they are, what mentality they have, you know, because it's 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 at, at the end of the day a team sport and a team sport where everybody is playing together. So it is important to have the right characters at the club with the right mentality. And I think we have tried to bring such uh, talent right across not only just the region, but other parts of the country. And obviously, as you mentioned, the foreigners also. Like, for example, if you see the foreigners, our foreigners are ones which have played at the highest level in their previous uh, careers so so you you bring that experience where the younger indian boys can learn from and get better and i think for for us uh, it's a process where uh, these individuals matter you know uh, the players the coaching staff uh, even the people who are working in the club i think they also play a very important role in how the club is being shaped and i think uh, these are the few factors which uh, as a club uh, we feel uh, we need to be focused more on to get the right people and the right characters mm -hmm. at the club Right, right, that's right. And Nortis, uh, the entire uh, people of the Nortis, uh, want to see it soar or scale to, you know, uh, scale higher, let's say. So now what is, one of, what is, what is your message to the people of the Nortis, especially because you have made us proud, so much proud. So what is your message to the people of the Nortis? I, th I, think, I think for us, uh, for, for, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's for every football club anywhere in the world, the fans play a very important role. And no club is... Uh, cannot get bigger unless and until the fans support is there and i just want to tell everybody involved who 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 are supporting northeast united that please come to the stadium watch us play be with us not just in victories but also when we when we lose because that's the time when the players and the staff need you the most so i think we want them to support us and uh, it's our responsibility to ensure that we will make them proud uh, by our performances on the pitch by the kind of work we do apart from the first team also which is obviously grassroots and um, you know player development uh, side of uh, of the club so i think uh, we just my message would be just to keep on supporting us and we will not disappoint them that's right so that was uh, mr Damhane, the CEO of Nortis United Football Club, he has given us a lot of insights into the struggles that they faced, the challenges that they overcame, and also the mission and the vision as a team. You know, all this, they are doing it for the Nortis, for the people of the Nortis, so that they can once again, uh, not just this Duran Cup, but in the future, years or days to come, bring us smiles, you know, bring smiles on our faces. So that was Mr. Damhane, the CEO of the Nortis United Football Club. This is Chipenkfung, Nortis Life.